Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through each of the ABRSM Theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download those in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and hints on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time on exam day when you're actually working through your paper on in the exam room. So if you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like, that would be super, and please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. And so let's carry on with paper C. That's the third paper from the third exam period in the 2015 exam past paper series. So if you turn with me to page 17, we're going to continue now looking at question two. And I always say, do have a go at this on your own. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's much better to have a crack at it. It doesn't matter if you go wrong. Uh, just uh, have your rubber, your eraser ready. And we'll uh, always make sure you're working in pencil. And that way, if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. You'll learn more thoroughly that way. So I'm hoping you've had a go of this. And now we'll have a look at these intervals. So we need to describe these melodic intervals, they've numbered them and bracketed them for us to uh, match this list here. And uh, we need to describe them fully, we need to give the number of the interval, the steps between the degrees of the scale, and also we need to give the full description of that interval. So number one, we can see we've already exceeded an octave, so I'm going to just jump the octave from this G up eight notes to this G. So now I can just do this um, without worrying and I'll just call it a compound interval. So counting again, we always count the given note as one. One, two, three, four. So we've got a compound fourth and G to C is uh, just a perfect fourth. Nothing's been extended or diminished. So we have a compound perfect fourth. Alternatively, you could say perfect 11th, but you need to be very careful to know which ones are major, minor, perfect, augmented and so on. And you need to know that 11ths are perfect, just like 4ths. And so I always say compound perfect 4th and then I've only got to remember this one number. So 4ths, 5ths and octaves are perfect to begin with. So now, let's move on to this next one. So now, we have a G to a C sharp. So here we had a G to a C with an interval um, in addition to that, we had a compound fourth. Now we've got a G to a C, just a normal fourth, but that C has been raised, so we've gone from perfect and we've now extended that, we've augmented that interval. So if you look from G to C, that's our perfect interval, and then the sharp raises it, it augments or makes the interval bigger. We don't go to major or minor, it's perfect to augmented. So we have an augmented fourth there. Let's have a look at number three. So first of all, let's just get the steps. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got a sixth. And now we always count the lowest note as our tonic. It's quite tricky though thinking F sharp to D sharp, so let's just simplify matters. And so instead of thinking F sharp to D sharp, let's just think F to D. So if we're thinking in F major, D is part of that major scale, so that would be a major sixth. And so if we just move that up a parallel semitone, we can see that's still a major sixth, and then we can confirm that we do know that um, D sharp is part of F sharp major. So that works that out easily in two ways. So we've got major six, that's part of the major scale. So here we go. Now we have 
the one, three, five, seven. So we know that it's a seventh and that's half marks straight away. So to get the other half of that mark allocation, we need to think of our lowest note as the tonic. So E major would have D sharps in it in the key signature. However, here we're just going to a D. So it's not a major interval. It should be D sharp to be major. We've made it down to a D. We've actually diminished that. We've made it smaller. So it goes actually from major to minor. We've made it smaller. And we know that D is part of the E minor key signature. So that's a minor seventh. And a minor interval is always a semitone smaller than a major interval. So our last one. So here we're going a one, three, five. We've got a fifth. Now our lowest note is G sharp. So let's first of all think about it G to D. Let's ignore the sharp for the moment. G to D would be perfect. However, we've made the interval smaller by raising the lower note. So we've made that interval, we've diminished it, we've made it smaller and so we go from perfect straight to diminished. There's no major or minor, it goes from perfect to diminished. So we've made that smaller, that's a diminished fifth. There we go. So half marks is literally just counting your blobs correctly. Make sure you count the first note head up and then count up the scale from there, the steps of the scale, the degrees of the scale. And then our second part of the marks is given by just properly uh, qualifying that answer with whether it's major, minor, diminished and so on. Let's move on to the next one. And this is a very similar question to begin with because we need to think about adjusting the intervals by transposing the key. So we're asked to rewrite this passage as it would appear for a player to read. This is a clarinet in A. Um, a clarinet plays a C but sounds an A. So in order for it to sound like this it needs to be transposed up a minor third. We're told not to use a key signature but to put in uh, the sharps and flats and naturals as accidentals. However, we still need to bear in mind what that key signature would be. So here, let's take this as a major. Of course, it could mean a minor key, but the principle's the same, so it's easier to just think of it in the major. So if this is an A major, we need to move up a minor third from A, and that takes us to C. So now we're thinking in the key of C major. So there's no key signature for us to bear in mind. There's no sharps or flats to be added in addition to what we come across here. So we now just need to adjust these accidentals as we go along. So I'm just going to, first of all, just map out the bar lines and then just make sure that you stay totally aligned with um, their example. I know that they've given us two lines, but there's no need for those two lines. And it's much easier to stay in step with them than sort of get carried away and eek over onto two lines because you'll just lose track of where you are and there's enough to be thinking about without getting lost. And then I'm just going to deal with the note heads and we'll worry about stems afterwards. Just take things one step at a time. If you try and do too much at once, um, mistakes are inevitable. And so we're transposing up a minor third, so we're literally going one, two, three, so we're moving up a line or up a space. So, there's our first note, one, two, three, same note again, and now we're going up one, three, four, one, three is the line, four, and you can see we've gone a third up from there. So now we're going to go down a fifth, one, three, five, which should take us here. Now let's just uh, go back and deal with these accidentals. So here, this was a G sharp that's been lowered by a natural sign. This is a B natural, and so in order to lower that by a semitone, it must become a flat, so we need to add a flat sign here. And then here, this was a C sharp in the key signature that's been lowered 
by a natural sine. So this is an E natural, and so to lower that by a semitone, we need to add a flat sine. You can't just copy the accidentals, you've got to adjust them accordingly and think whether it lowers or raises it by a semitone. So we've done that, so now carrying on down a third takes us to C, back up. A third, repeat that, repeat that. I'll sketch the tie in because I'm pretty certain those stems will be going down. Same again. Now here, this is a C natural that's been raised by a sharp and so this E flat will be raised by adding a natural sign. You can see that E flat raised a semitone takes you to E natural. So we need to just cancel that flat next door note up a step and now we're going to jump down one three five one three five which should take us to b so you can see i'm approaching this in two ways i'm looking at the original and going up a third and i'm also double checking that i've gone the right interval from the previous note so i'm just double checking myself from two different viewpoints so here this is a g sharp that's been lowered by a natural so here, this is a B natural, and so we're going to have to lower that a semitone by adding a flat, down a step, down a third, so that takes us to F, yes, up a fifth, one, three, five, takes us to C, up a third, that's right, down a third, takes us to A, that's correct, Now here we're repeating this note. This was an F sharp that's been lowered by a natural. And so, so we can see an F sharp lowered by a natural. Here we have an A natural and so we lower that by adding a flat. So that lowers it a semitone just by adding the flat. Next door note down, down a third again. This was a C sharp because of the key signature. It's been lowered by a natural. This is an E natural because we have no key signature to bear in mind. And so we lower it by a semitone by adding a flat. One, three, five takes us to the B. This was a G sharp in accordance to the key signature that's been lowered by a natural. This is a B natural because we have no key signature to bear in mind and so we lower that to semitone by adding a flat step down that was an F sharp according to the key signature it's been lowered by a natural this is an A natural because we have no key signature and we lower that a semitone by adding a flat so that's all the hard thinking done and now we've just got to add the stems and so here these are all above the middle line so these will be um, stems down these two will be stems down because I'm beginning and ending in the same note and there we've got repeated notes I'm just keeping these lines not diagonal need another beam there carried away there, keep it neat and tidy, again these are coming down, slight diagonal incline there because we're going up a step, I suppose you could keep it straight because there's a repeated note, but they've sort of done a slight diagonal so I shall do the same, got the tie in place, now here we can go either way, this is the middle line, these are all coming down so I'll keep these coming down just the same, However, now we do need to change. This is a stem up. Now this one is um, one, three, four below the middle line. This is just one above the middle line. And so this one kind of needs it most. And so that one rules the vote. They must come up because they're below the middle line. Same here. Same here because that can go either way. Ooh, got a bit wonky there. 
and there we go and that's that question completed it's quite a time consuming question that one is but if you just take it a step at a time just deal with one aspect at once so you don't get confused I do hope that's been helpful to you. I hope that you're enjoying it and I hope it's of benefit to your studies. Uh, I'm certainly enjoying working through it so I hope it's of worth to you. If you can give me a like that would be super. Please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in the pipeline and please do visit SharonBill.com and make use of all the resources available to help you there. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.